Well, David Musila on this and is joining us now as a former deputy speaker. Thank you so much for making time for us. Yours was an interesting relationship with the former head of state. Walk us through that relationship and how you ended up saving his life twice. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, I want again to start by sending my heartfelt condolences to the family of my friend, uh, the former president, Mwai Kibaki. A good question you have asked me. Uh, I was provincial commissioner, uh, Central Province, then for six years, yeah. from 79 onwards. And um, as I said yesterday, uh, the late president was my boss in a way, as a PC. Yeah. But again, we developed some very good relations. Um, the first duty of uh, an administrator is to protect the, uh, to have security of the, the leadership yeah. in mind. And uh, therefore, when uh, the, it was announced that there was a coup that uh, morning uh, in 82, my first duty was to look for the whereabouts of uh, President Kibaki because he, it was a weekend and mainly used to work in the central province over the weekend. Yeah. And I found him in his house in Othaya. And I, I told him that uh, things are not good and he must take my instructions. And my instructions were that he would be picked from his house to be brought to Nyeri where I could oversee his security. And uh, of course, he's a very humble man. He complied and said, whatever you say, I will yeah. do. I dispatched a contingent of uh, um, a policemen, very well armed policemen, to go and fetch him and brought him to Nyeri. I had surveyed where I could put him, where the soldiers, and you know, they were very, in very close proximity in Nanyuki. So I decided to put him in in a store yeah. at, the Nyeri, at the Nyeri Club. It has been a secret ever since. It's just now I'm disclosing where, where, you <laughs> where I put uh, my, my vice president. Yeah. So I put him in that store, a, a very unhealthy place, and ventilated, and he stayed there for a while as we watched the developments. Yeah. And in the afternoon when I realized that the danger was not there, no more danger was there, and knowing that he was in a very unhealthy uh, place, I, I had to order him removed and we took him to a house, yeah. a comfortable place. Well, I, I don't think I saved his life, but I only took precautions to yeah. make sure that uh, uh, no harm was done to the vice president. What was your fear at the time? Because that was in 82, some of us were not even born. But what was your fear at the time? <laughs> My fear? Yes. You know, you know, when you are in those positions, yeah. I, I was also a young man because I was a provincial commissioner at 37. Yeah. I was also a young man. But when you are in those positions, you develop some, uh, some stuff in your body that you don't fear anything. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 did, I decided that my life was not important. The lives of others were important. And I took charge of the province. I gave instructions. We protected utilities, uh, power and lighting, government stores, uh, grain stores. Yeah. And I was walking up and around knowing that there was danger, but my duty was to protect other people. Yeah. So I did not have any... Uh, I came to realize later that, oh, I did so much and I did not uh, care about myself, but I said that is how we are trained to do. Yeah. The second episode happened... Um, uh, in 2020, in 2002, yeah. when we were campaigning for NAC, yeah. and uh, we spent the night at my home in Mwingi, uh, President uh, Kebaki, then Vice President, and our presidential candidate, and Raila Odinga, we were all campaigning for NAC. And so we went to various places in Kitui, and uh, our last uh, rally was in Kitui town. Yeah. 
And this is where um, we hurried up because uh, the late president told me that he had an appointment at the Higa Club and he had to be there by seven. So we hurried up and finished our rally, our rally in Kitui. And then we drove. I was right behind him in my vehicle and he also, but he was driving, the vehicle was being driven very fast. Yeah. So we came all the way to Machakos Junction. Yeah. Uh, that's where there was an accident because the driver did not take the turn. He just w went through the bush and crossed the Mombasa Road. Thank God there was no vehicle crossing. And uh, there was a petrol station being developed uh, opposite. And there was a big ditch, which was a very deep ditch, which had been uh, uh, made for the, for the petrol tank. Yeah. And so the vehicle, uh, the, the Kibagi's vehicle flew right deep into that uh, 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 ditch. ditch. Yeah. And uh, I jumped out of my car, I ran into the ditch. It is a long story, but what happened is that I found uh, the vehicle of uh, Kibagi right in the deep ditch. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, the bugs had blown out, and there was a lot of cloud of powder and so forth. So I found the people milling around the ditch and others even going down. And I realized that again, I had to take uh, uh, security measures. Yeah. And I announced to the people that now I was in charge and I want everybody away until I give in orders. So I went down to the ditch and organized yeah. people inside ditch, others up there. And we lifted him up and took him outside the ditch. Yeah. Um, then I tried to talk to him. He was in great pain. He asked me, where is my arm? Because the arm was twisted. I saw the, the foot was again the other way around. I put it right. And I put, I put him in my vehicle and uh, drove him towards Nairobi. So you did this on your own, first of all? It... Well, there were other people <coughs> with me. Yeah. That's why I said you could not, because it was, it was right deep in the ditch. We yeah. all Came, uh, pushed him out, put him out. Yeah. And of course, he had the security people. At uh, that time, they, 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 they were saying, no, nobody should touch him. Yeah. And, and, and when I arrived, of course, they knew me. I said, I am now in charge. You take orders from me. And then that's how we proceeded. Now, we had challenges from the, the junction because it was around 6 o'clock. Yeah. And there were many trucks going to and from Mombasa. And I needed to take the back to the hospital as quickly as I could. Yeah. There was no communication. Mobile phones had not, there was ne no network. There was no network there. Yeah. Up to almost towards uh, the river is where I got into contact with the AMREF. Yeah. I called AMREF. And uh, they told me, you wait there, we are coming. But I said, I can't wait. Yeah. So I came all the way to Nairobi Hospital. I had called uh, Dr. Konyo with the, uh, the Kibaki's instructions. Yeah. I had also informed his family that we have had uh, an incident yeah. without uh, elaborating. So I, I brought him to Nairobi Hospital and I found um, other politicians like Moody Awori, uh, Raila had already arrived and uh, Dr. Konyo had assembled a good team there and I handed over. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, they had told me what to do. As we were coming, they said I should continue talking to him yeah. to avoid the shock. So yeah. I engaged him and, and he was responding because I remember when we reached uh, uh, the proximity of Nairobi airport, I mean uh, Jomo Kenyatta airport, he saw the lights and asked me, where are those lights? I said, this is the airport. Yeah. So I brought him and delivered and I was very happy that I so he was conscious throughout this time. And he was conscious. Him and talk yes, to him. So what I were you talking him, to him about? I engaged him this fully. This is someone who's your senior, so you, you can't yes, get him. things like I, I was telling him, I know what has happened, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, the Almighty God cannot allow this to happen because he was our candidate. Yeah. And we did not know what to do. Uh, the, the Almighty God cannot allow this to happen, so nothing is going to go wrong. Yeah. And so I kept him al al alive, and he was really very cooperative. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of leadership, what what was his demeanor like as a leader that you can compare even now? And I'd like to hear this from all the panelists as well, comparing yes. his style of leadership and what you've seen over the years. You, you know, first of all, 
the president was very humble. Yeah. He respected public officers. He respected even the small people. He respected